Daily Dose. James Buchanan. Born in 1791 Cove Gap, Pennsylvania, James Buchanan opened a successful law practice in 1812 before serving in the Pennsylvania legislature as a member of the Federalist Party. Elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1820, over the next decade of service, Buchanan flipped to the Democratic Party following the dissolution of the Federalist Party. Appointed ambassador to Russia in 1831 by President Andrew Jackson, returning to the states two years later, in 1834, Buchanan was elected to the U.S. Senate for the state of Pennsylvania, holding office for the next 11 years until he resigned his seat to become President James Polk's Secretary of State, helping to expand the nation's territory by one-third, thanks to the annexation of Texas and much of the present-day American Southwest following the defeat of Mexico during the Mexican-American War. After serving as Minister to Great Britain during the presidency of Franklin Pierce, by the time Buchanan ran for president in 1856, the country by then had grown deeply divided over the issue of slavery. And while his primary Republican challenger, John Fremont, asserted that the federal government should ban slavery in all U.S. states and territories, Buchanan won the White House on a more moderate platform that the issue of slavery should be decided by individual states and territories. The only bachelor to hold the office of U.S. President, Buchanan earned his nickname Ten Cent Jimmy by his Republican opponents after Buchanan maintained during his presidential campaign that Ten Cents was a fair daily wage for manual laborers. The issue of slavery in America came to a head two days after Buchanan was sworn into office when the Supreme Court handed down its Dred Scott decision, ruling that the federal government had no regulatory power over the issue of slavery, at the same time denying African Americans, free or enslaved, the rights of citizenship. Tensions between the abolitionist North and the slaveholding South worsened with Buchanan's support of the Lecompton Constitution, which would have allowed Kansas to become a slave state, while in October of 1859, John Brown's raid on the federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia, pushed a nation to the brink of civil war. Upholding his campaign promise not to run for re-election, after Abraham Lincoln won the election of 1860, Buchanan reportedly told his successor, if you are as happy in entering the White House as I shall feel on returning to Wheatland, his Lancaster, Pennsylvania estate, you are a happy man, making James Buchanan the last sitting president before a nation went to war with itself. And there you have it, James Buchanan, today on The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, share the link with a friend or colleague so that they too can learn something new every day.